Hello, Planeswalkers. Today I want to talk about an actual D&D Planeswalker that's in the Adventures of the Forgotten Realm set. And some of his history may surprise you. Hello, welcome to the Signature Spellbomb, and I'm Chad. If you like the content I make, remember to like, share, and subscribe. Turn on notifications. Today I'm going to be reviewing another Planeswalker out of the upcoming Adventures in the Forgotten Realm setting for the Oathbreaker format. Let's get into it. Today I want to talk about Mordenkainen the card, Mordenkainen the character, and its value to you in the game. So let's start off with a little bit of lore, but it's also going to be history. <clears throat> Gary Gygax created D&D in order to play with his friends. It's just a fun game. It's kind of the birth of most tabletop games. Mordenkainen is one of the characters that goes all the way back to the beginning of D&D. He's been around forever, and he actually canonically has the power to visit other planes, so he's a true plane Walker from the D&D setting. Notice, however, I said the D&D setting and not Forgotten Realms. Mordenkainen doesn't originally come from the Forgotten Realms world. He comes from Earth, spelled O-E-R-T-H, but pronounced the way I said it for all confusion in the audience. He's amazing, and he has many spells based on him or that he created as an archmage in the D&D worlds. That even includes the dog that his card produces. I would say from a war standpoint, this is an amazing card. I'm a little bit less picky on the fact that it's not a Forgotten Realms character because it is a character that could canonically travel there, so not a big deal. Now, if you think I've got that wrong, if you could let me know in the comments below, because I certainly always want to know more, I would say from a war perspective, I would rank this pretty high. Let's go ahead and let's look at his actual Planeswalker card now. Mordenkainen costs four and two blue, and is a Planeswalker Mordenkainen. He comes into play with five loyalty. He has a plus two loyalty ability that says, draw two cards and then put a card from your hand on the bottom of your library. He has a minus two, which is amazing, that says, create a blue dog illusion token that has power and toughness each equal to twice the number of cards in your hand, which is a pretty back-breaking ability to have in blue, <clears throat> the biggest card drawer in the game. Is minus 10 is to exchange your hand and your library, then shuffle, you know, your new library that used to be your hand. Also get an emblem that says you have no maximum hand size. Let's kind of do a little bit of the breakdown. Six mana, Mordenkainen's a little hard to play early in a mono blue deck. However, five loyalty and the ability to create maybe a huge creature defending himself isn't necessarily as big of a problem if you're trying to get to that ultimate. In a lot of blue decks, being able to pick up all the spells in your library not just give you all the answers, so all your win conditions. Honestly, see, for a deck like Mordenkainen, it's very likely that the most optimal win condition strategies be Jace out of War of the Spark, Thassa's Oracle, as well as Lab Maniac. If you want to take it in a different direction, I would greatly appreciate that. It's like we already have quite a few decks that fit in that realm of deck construction. As far as cost goes, he, just like the Plane Walker I talked about the other day, is currently a little inflated. He's running about $14.82 or thereabout. Uh, sadly, because of the power of this Plane Walker, unlike Master of Flowers, I do think it's going to stay high. So you may need to make an informed decision as to how much you want to build a deck around this and if there's not better suited Planeswalker for your plan. I do think the minus 10 that's going to let you control the size of your library so close to the end of the game, essentially half a win condition. So <clears throat> take that with a grain of salt. I've been talking about Mordenkainen a little bit today. His history, who he is as a card and a cost. I would say it's also a very playable Oathbreaker card, and I'm excited to see what decks people make. In fact, if you have an idea, please post it in the comments below. I'd love to see it. And if you have any uh, comments or suggestions for other videos, I'd love to hear those as well, because that's how I'm going to make better content for you. Again, for stopping by today, and I want you to remember, your Planeswalker Spark lights up my life.